Dear reader, come to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Repent. Reject Satan and all his works. Make haste to enter this peace treaty with the heavenly kingdom, so that your name is written in the book of life and so that you are not thrown into the lake of fire and the second death does not come to you, but so that you inherit the eternal life. These sins, quoted in the peace treaty are taken from the Bible, where many other sins are enumerated as well. After you repent, read and do what is written in the Holy Scriptures, so that you may live long on earth and have eternal life in heaven. God bless us. Peace Treaty with Heaven In the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, before the whole visible and invisible world and before these witnesses I reject Satan, the false prophet and the Antichrist. Holy and just Father, Creator and Lord of the universe, in the name of your only begotten and beloved Son, who is my Lord and Savior, please, welcome me as one of your servants, like you welcomed the prodigal son. Look at me through the offering of the Lamb of God, the Lord Jesus Christ. Sprinkle the blood of Jesus over me, cleanse me from all my sins and transgressions and heal me in his wounds. Lord Jesus Christ, thank you for dying for my sins, transgressions, iniquities and vices, for rising again from the dead for my justification and for suffering to be pierced and crushed for my diseases and sufferings, that I absolutely deserved, because I was disobeying God's commands, I was neglecting the warnings of the Holy Spirit and the Word of God, I was damaging my mind, heart and body, I was looking for extraordinary revelations, consolation, healing and salvation independent from you, from my enemy and his servants. My dear Savior, I accept your invitation, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Matthew 11:28. I am burdened with many sins, doubts, fears, diseases and sufferings that have come upon me because I had been rebellious against God and His commandments. I admit my complete and unconditional surrender. I come to you by faith without any merits or claims. I want to enter into a peace treaty with the heavenly kingdom of my own free will, under no compulsion. Dear Lord, I honor my parents and ancestors to the fourth generation, but I reject their sins, iniquities, transgressions and vices. If as a consequence of their sins or curses and spells they have pronounced against me or because they have shed innocent blood I was cursed, please break the curse and change it into a blessing. If sorcerers curses or spells have been pronounced against me by occultists, antichrists, or any other servant of the devil, please, break them. I believe that the reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work. Dear Lord Jesus Christ, destroy completely the devil's work in my life. I sincerely forgive those that have been unjust to me or have offended me. Please, forgive them as well. If I have been cursed because of sins that I have committed, please, forgive those sins and set me free from all evil. I reject every false religion, pagan superstition, satanic or heretical teaching that twists God's word or contradicts it. I reject the false teachings of Moon, Baha'i, Petr Danov, Helen G. White, the Mormons, Jehovah's Witnesses, Krishna followers, etc. If I possess any of their literature, I will destroy it. I reject all magic spells, witchcraft, seances, mediums, meditation, fortune-telling or thought-reading with the help of sexual or foretelling spirits as well as establishing unbiblical contact with the great beyond, with the help of the fallen angels, the devils, claiming to be extraterrestrials. I reject fortune-telling and reading coffee grounds, telling fortunes by the means of cards, beans, bread, palm reading chiromancy and telling the future by reading the insides of animals, the clouds, the moon and the other heavenly bodies, the human face, the flowers, by casting bullets lead, by reading mosaics, photographs, icons, etc. I reject the false sounds of astrology and the horoscopes, connected with it, faith in the signs of the zodiac and telling the future by reading the twelve constellations even when false teachers connect them with Bible symbols. I reject the heresy of rebirth and the metaphysical worship and pseudo-healings, connected with it. I reject occult exercises and the worship of the yogi as well as the false teachings of the far Near East. I reject people claiming to have extrasensory perception and the occult pseudo-healings, 
false magnetic biofields, and false magnetic bioelectric currents, connected with them. I reject hypnosis and the enchantments, false healings, and learning foreign languages through hypnosis, connected with it. I reject every occult follower, sorcerer, person claiming to possess extrasensory perception, medium, Satanist, Antichrist and every other occult source and I break all ties I may have had with them, because they are servants of the devil and the demons. I reject listening to satanic music or dances that drive the listeners to sexual profligacy, drugs and glorification of Satan and the demons. I reject every occult curiosity about my past and future or the past and future of my relatives, friends, loved ones and enemies unless these are revealed by the Holy Spirit and serve for my or their repentance. I reject sending mercury, curses, spells, performing and dissolving magic, including the so-called white magic, because sorcerers are servants of the devil and he never did anybody any good. I reject amulets and talismans, solitaires and gambling. I reject looking for water, for treasures, for archaeological finds, churches, monasteries and other objects, buried under the ground, through the so-called vine walking with the help of baguettes, a vine or wooden stick, copper or iron electrodes that react to the presence of deposits. I reject asking angels, gods, saints and extraterrestrials of any kind by knocking, turning or lifting sticks, keys, cards, letters, plumb lines, tables, books and even the Bible, as well as using the services of fortune edlers, that read on sugar or summon dead saints or dead relatives and loved ones of ours. I reject automatic writing and drawing in the so-called psychometry. I reject diagnosing sick people and healing them with the help of acupuncture, plumb lines, rings and hairs or threads, as well as checking blood pressure in this way. I reject every cult, custom, tradition, prejudice, teaching, philosophy or false religion that denies the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, contradicts his redemptive sacrifice for humankind on the cross of Golgotha or twists his teaching and the oneness of the Holy Trinity. I consider heretics, atheists, antichrists and traitors of Christianity all those that intentionally pervert, deny or reject some parts or passages of the New Testament or even just a word of the Christian creed. I reject every piece of occult, atheistic, blasphemous, heretic, Nazi, communist, pornographic, satanic literature and music. I promise not to distribute such spiritual poison on the radio, television, in newspapers, magazines, books, etc. I will destroy and fire all my books, magazines, newspapers, leaflets, audio cassettes, videos, etc. with similar content as did the magicians in Ephesus, that repented Acts 1919. In the name of Jesus Christ one break and destroy any demonic heredity that has fallen upon me because of the disobedience of my parents, grandparents and relatives. I reject membership in detestable to God, atheistic, terrorist, criminal, bandit, satanic, occult parties and organizations that achieve their goals using violence, terror, robbery and murder on those that hold different opinions from theirs. I reject serving other countries' intelligences, giving malicious reports, treason, slanders, and spying. I confess and reject also the following sins. Blasphemy, sacrilege, profanity and denying the Holy Trinity. Second, idolatry, worship of creatures, avarice, miserliness, offering idolatrous and satanic sacrifices. Third, insults and disobedience to parents and beating them. Four, insulting church services held in the name of God by any Christian denomination in any building or place. Five, destroying Bibles, New Testaments or books of the liturgy, desecrating church, Bible or evangelical symbols, books, objects, videos, icons or pictures with biblical content, as well as the grave of any deceased person. 6. Sexual immorality, adultery and different forms of sexual perversion. Homosexuality and sexual perversion with animals. Adulterous, lustful desires confessing the names of the women or men that have been the object of lustful desires with prayers for them to be defended from the immoral spirits. Onanism masturbation. 7. 
breaking up families except for the reason of adultery, giving up on children, giving birth to illegitimate children, abortion and advising for it. 8. Theft of money, property, valuable objects, farming land, other people's glory and abuse of public and personal finances using them for criminal activities. The things being stolen should be restored immediately. 9. Lies and false witness in the courtroom, in the church and before the mass media. 10. Convicting innocence and justifying guilty by the power we have been given. 11. Taking and giving bribes. 12. Persecution, oppression and despise of widows, orphans, foreigners, blind, lame, deaf, dumb, demon-possessed, unhappy, sick, depressed and old people and seizing their inheritance by fraud. 13. Murder, revenge, hate. 14. Pride and arrogance. 15. To make an object of insults and ridicule of the gifts and the ministries of the Holy Spirit. 16. Physical, material and psychological violence on people who don't hold the same beliefs as us. 17. Production, trade and abuse of weapons, drugs, poisonous and unclean food, alcohol, cigarettes, isotopes. 18. Speaking the name of God in vain and connecting him with a lie, a false witness, a false prophecy, a curse or a slander. 19. Seduction or rape. 20. Preaching heresy and anything differing from Christ's good news and the New Testament in churches or anywhere else. 21. False claims of people who do not meet the biblical standard for ministry and gifts in Christ's church. 22. Betrayal, treacherous and violent seizure of church power. 23. Shame and fear to admit faith in God and the Lord Jesus before that atheistic, pervert and wicked world. 24. Giving up on one's religious beliefs and conformity to those of antichrists. Preaching atheism. Telling blasphemous and political jokes, slandering Christians and political leaders. 25. Participation in drug traffic and weapon traffic. 26. Proselytism, recruiting or seducing believers and unbelievers by offering them money, wealth, glory, position, health and happiness men and women for spouses or lovers, gifts, prizes and help for the purpose of making them members of a particular denomination or religion, disregarding their convictions. 27. Acts of wrath, rage, misanthropy, racism, chauvinism, anti-Semitism. 28. Hypocrisy and duplicity. 29. Acts of cruelty towards people, animals and birds. 30. Deliberate and constant breaking the rules and traffic laws as pedestrians or drivers. 31. Breaking the rules in the country where we live permanently or temporarily. 32. Gluttony, laziness, dirtiness. 33. Abuse of church or state power. Participation in a government that relies on terror, arouses fear, practices censorship and violence towards those that do not hold the same convictions. 34. Proposing, voting for and applying laws that are harming for the people, the nation, anti-religious laws or racial laws. 35. Creating laws that serve a certain party, stratum, class, mafia, coalition or even a person. 36. Evading paying taxes to the country one lives in. 37. Neutral behavior support or voting for a party or a coalition of antichrists that openly or secretly try to deprive us of the right to worship God or to live according to God's standard. 38. Hate, insults, curses against the head of the state, the government, the political leaders and the chiefs. 39. Agreement, openly or silently, with antichrists there to be no Christian theology classes in the country. 40. Persecution, insults, repression, dismissal of any Christian that preaches the full and correct good news of Christ because of his faith in Christ. 41. Persecution and insults at clergymen from any Christian denomination. 42. Theft of church or monastery possessions, stock, icons, finances, gifts, monastery property, 
everything stolen should be restored immediately. 43. Preaching bad sermons, giving bad lectures and telling vulgar and profane jokes and stories. Dissemination of religious, racial and national hate. 44. Trade with children and adults. Adoption after paying the parents or state child care institutions. Theft of children for any purpose. 45. Prostitution and pimping. Trade with women for whorehouses. 46. Eating and selling animal blood, black pudding, meat from dead or drowned animals. 47. Trade with limb blood, blood plasma and human organs. Cannibalism. 48. Turning people into zombies, deliberate damage of the nervous system and mental health of people through hypnosis, magic, sorcery, medication, drugs, herbs and other means. Putting under a curse by deliberate seduction, violence or blackmail or giving evil advice like Blum or the Nicolaitans. 49. Service or work in armies, organizations, parties or the mafia that harm the interests and steal the treasures, the wealth and the finances of our country. Betrayal of one's country and one's faith. Robbing one's country by signing harmful contracts and deals. 50. Deliberate cover-up of the existence of infectious diseases or infection of others with AIDS, SARS, syphilis, tuberculosis, metal, hepatitis and other infectious diseases. 51. Refusing help to a person after an accident or a dying person. Starving, depriving from heat, tormenting or beating someone to death or driving someone to suicide. 52. Not fulfilling vows, promises, oaths and commitments. 53. Deliberate cover-up of the existence of radiation, dangerous chemical, bacteriological or other poisonous substances from those working with them and the use of isotopes and poisons for harming or killing persons. 54. Seizure of real estate or agricultural land or deliberate sabotage of the restitution of these to their owners and their heirs. Moving an ancient boundary stone. 55. Prayers to God from malicious or selfish motives. Cursing using the name of God or in the name of Satan. 56. Composition and performance of songs glorifying Satan and his servants, the Antichrists. I also admit that I have not fulfilled the two New Testament commandments of loving God and my neighbor. I have not loved the Lord, my God with all my soul, with all my mind and with all my strength. There are people I used to hate and still hate. I forgive them sincerely now, whether they are alive or dead say their names. There have been also many times in my life when I knew and could do something good, but I didn't do it and I have sinned in this way. Dear Lord Jesus Christ, please forgive all my inherited sins, all sins leading to death or not, that I have committed intentionally or unintentionally with thoughts, words or deeds. Loosen me and set me free from every curse, oath, spell and magic, from all false, evil, sick spirit and give spiritual, physical and material blessings in their place. I surrender my spirit, soul and body in your pierced hands. I desire to be with you Lord Jesus Christ and your saints until I die and after I die. In the name of my Heavenly Father, Creator and Lord of the Universe, in the name of His only begotten and beloved Son, my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and by the fire, power and operation of the Holy Spirit I command, all diseases and evil spirits, leave my body and go to the place the Lord has prepared for you. Bless me, Lord so that I can conform my personal, public and family life to your biblical order and harmony, make it a life of peace with God and my neighbor, a life of love for God and my neighbor. Amen. Some sincere Christians admit that, for decades we have been going to church, yet we have been walking in darkness. We called ourselves faithful, orthodox, yet we were living in sin. The peace treaty opened our eyes. Some thought astrology a science, but what school teaches that sounds unless it is some new school, founded by antichrists? Others thought that following certain ritual and traditions would save them, yet in their ignorance they committed occult and mortal sins. Still others believe that fortune tellers, clairvoyants, 
People claiming to possess extrasensory perception, mediums, occultists and magicians served God and not the devil. Some others believe that the teaching of yoga is a kind of physical training and not an occult demonic teaching. Others thought that summoning the dead is not a sin, etc. In August 1995 a sister testified that after reading carefully the peace treaty of the sinner with the heavenly kingdom and repenting sincerely, she was perfectly healed and set free. She kissed and hugged what was written, rejoiced and glorified the Lord. It should be clear that not the paper or the letter are the reason for her healing and freedom, but the Holy Spirit of God that is always ready to set us free and heal us in the name of Jesus Christ if we confess our sins sincerely and give them up, if we believe and do not doubt that the Lord Jesus Christ has shed his holy blood for all our sins, transgressions and vices. There are evangelical pastors and teachers that reject the peace treaty of the sinner with the heavenly kingdom, because it does not exist in the Bible in the same form. They resemble that Arab chief, who after the invasion of Alexandria, seeing the enormous library with innumerable books and papyruses, declared, if what is in those books is written in the Quran, then they are useless, if it is not, then they are harmful. Burn down the library. And the library was set to fire and burned to ashes. If a new believer has entered a peace treaty with heaven, yet he still cannot be set free from those enslaving vices. He has no peace inside and lacks the joy of salvation, he should not be discouraged. Let him or her enter their room when there is nobody there, close the door behind and kneel before their Savior and pray. If he or she is sick and cannot kneel, let them pray in bed. Let them remember all their sins from their childhood to that moment of prayer and say, Dear Lord, I have committed this, I have said this, coveted this, please, forgive me. Let them pray in the same way for each sin. The Lord will send them a spirit of repentance that will remind them of all their sins, transgressions and iniquities. If they remember that someone has hurt them with words, has inflicted some injury on them or has treated them unfairly, let them say, Dear Lord, I have provoked that person to hurt me and even if I haven't, even if I am completely innocent, I forgive that person sincerely and beg you to forgive him or her. That is the most difficult thing to forgive those that have done evil to us when we have done nothing to provoke them. At that same moment we give the first fruit of repentance and begin the process of becoming more like our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who forgave those that beat him, nailed him on the cross and killed him for no reason. It is possible that after one has forgiven all those that have hurt him or her he or she still feels depressed to some extent then that person should confess exactly what troubles him or her before a group of Christians, who have been born again, who are guided directly by the Holy Spirit and who have the power to drive out demons. Let them unbind that person and set him or free Jesus Christ, driving out the demon. And these signs will accompany those who believe, in my name they will drive out demons. They will speak in new tongues Mark 16:17. It is outrageous to declare a demon-possessed person baptized with the Holy Spirit. Some people admit, I was told to repeat a few strange words and I did. Then I was declared baptized in the Holy Spirit, but I am not sure it is so, because I cannot speak in any new tongue. I was told that some people speak in new tongues, but I don't have that gift, just a sign of a tongue, that was a sign that I was baptized in the Holy Spirit. There is no such thing as a sign of a tongue in the Bible and this is a proof that such baptizers are false teachers. Such lies confuse new believers and are a hindrance for their healing and freedom. The Lord Jesus Christ did not say that those who believed would have the sign of a tongue, but he said clearly, we'll speak in new tongues. It is wrong to teach people that the baptism of the Holy Spirit is unnecessary, useless and dangerous. The Holy Spirit not without purpose warns us by the words of the Apostle James, Not many of you should presume to be teachers because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. James 3 1 Some brothers from an evangelical church came to ask me, Brother, what gifts do we have? I answered, Why do you ask me? Because a prophetess distributed gifts to us. She said to one that he had the gift to drive out demons, Another had the gift of prophesy, still another, the gift of miraculous powers, another, to speak in new tongues, another, to interpret tongues and another, 
to distinguish between spirits. I asked the woman who had the gift to distinguish between spirits, how do you distinguish between them? And she answered, I don't know. To convince someone that has not been born again, has not been baptized with the Holy Spirit and who has no spiritual gift operating in his life that he has been born again, that he is baptized and that spiritual gifts are operating in his life is like convincing a man who has never seen the sea that he is a professional sailor. False teachers have come who teach new believers to drive out demons by calling them worms, caterpillars, by treading upon them with their feet and writing on the soles of their shoes Satan, saying, Satan, you are a worm, you are a caterpillar, I tread upon you and I command you to leave this man. Many young people were harmed by this absurdity, some became depressed, others became demon-possessed. The scripture says, I write to you, young men, because you have overcome the evil one. 1 John 2.13 What heroes are those young men who have overcome only a caterpillar or a worm that could be pecked by a sparrow? Underestimating Satan is a deviation from the teaching of Christ and the Holy Scripture, and any deviation is a step to failure. Anyone who runs ahead and does not continue in the teaching of Christ does not have God. 2 John 1 9 Whoever wants to know the power of Satan, can read the first and second chapter in the book of Job. I will quote only two verses, while he was still speaking, another messenger came and said, The fire of God came from the sky and burned up the sheep and the servants, and I am the only one who has escaped to tell you so Satan went out of the presence of the Lord and afflicted Job with painful sores from the soles of his feet to the top of his head. Job 1 16, 2, 7 Many young people have come to me who were depressed and even demon-possessed after chasing away the devil, calling him worm, caterpillar, non-entity and many such things. Most of them had bound and chased the devil from unbelievers, people who had not repented, atheists and antichrists, something that could never happen until these people or their parents come to faith that the Lord Jesus Christ is the Son of God, who has died on Golgotha for their sins and has risen again from the dead for their justification. God defends the authority of Christ's words and the Spirit of God says, But whoever rejects the Son will not see life, for God's wrath remains on him. John 3.36 And it also says, I told you that you would die in your sins. If you do not believe that I am the one I claim to be, you will indeed die in your sins. John 8.24 some preachers and teachers find themselves in ridiculous situations. They claim to be experts on driving out demons without ever having driven out any demons and others claim to be experts on speaking in new tongues never having spoken any. When such experts teach you to speak in new tongues or to drive out demons, ask them to speak in new tongues and take them to a demon-possessed person to drive out the demon from him. If they cannot do it, advise them to remain silent. Such teachers and preachers resemble coaches in box who have never stepped over the ropes of the ring or coaches in parachuting who have never jumped out a plane with a parachute. Imagine a driving instructor who has never been behind the wheel and has never driven a car. It is easy to guess how much a sportsman will progress when he is taught by such teachers and coaches. Attention! Do not drive out demons from atheists who have not repented and have not come to faith, antichrists. Mormons, Moonists, occult followers, people claiming to possess extrasensory perception, magicians, Jehovah's Witnesses, Baha'i followers, followers of Danath, Spiritists, Yogi, Krishna followers, mediums, and other heretics, so that you don't fall in the embrace of the devil. But if you have already fallen in his trap and want to be set free, do not be deceived that anyone else but the liberator of the spiritual slaves, the Lord Jesus Christ can set you free. Go to him and enter into a peace treaty with the heavenly kingdom. Confess, reject and leave your sins and he will set you free and will heal you. Blessed be our Lord and God, the Creator and Lord of the universe who loved us so much, that he sent his only begotten Son to die in our place to set us free from Satan, sin and death and to teach us the greatest science, Christian religion so that we could know the will of God and fulfilling it to find peace, joy and eternal life in Christ Jesus. The peace treaty of the sinner with heaven cannot on its own, without the Lord Jesus Christ save, make born again, set free or heal anybody. It is like a mirror where everyone can see where and how he has made himself dirty. 
but the mirror, no matter how long we stare in it, can never wash us. It only shows us the need to be washed. And while the uncleanness of the flesh is washed with water, chemicals or soap, spiritual uncleanness is washed away only by the holy blood of the Lamb of God, the Lord Jesus Christ, shed on the cross of Golgotha for the sins of the whole world. Thank you Lord Jesus Christ for suffering when you were crushed and pierced for my diseases and died for me, to redeem me from the curse of sin. Thank you Holy Spirit for convicting me, encouraging me, consoling me, setting me free and healing me in the name of Jesus Christ. Be my mentor, teacher and head, always and everywhere. Take under your control all spheres of my life. Glory to the Trinity, one God in three persons, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. And so, dear brother and dear sister, get behind the will and take hold of your life. Give heed to the advices of the greatest teacher that is always and everywhere with us and in us. Your fate and life will depend on whether you follow his commandments carefully. Make haste to repent sincerely, so that death does not surprise you as an unbeliever and without repentance, because there is worse than the death of the body and that is a second death, the death of the soul. The Lord Jesus Christ says the truth warning us, Do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Matt 10, 28 And the Holy Spirit warns us of the same thing in the vision, given to Saint John, the Evangelist, Then I saw a great white throne and him who was seated on it. Earth and sky fled from his presence, and there was no place for them. And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne, and books were opened. Another book was opened, which is the book of life. The dead were judged according to what they had done as recorded in the books. The sea gave up the dead that were in it, and death and Hades gave up the dead that were in them, and each person was judged according to what he had done. Then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. The lake of fire is a second death. If anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. Revelation 20, 11-15 Dear reader, come to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Repent. Reject Satan and all his works. Make haste to enter this peace treaty with the heavenly kingdom, so that your name is written in the book of life and so that you are not thrown into the lake of fire and the second death does not come to you but so that you inherit the eternal life. These sins, quoted in the peace treaty are taken from the Bible, where many other sins are enumerated as well. After you repent, read and do what is written in the Holy Scriptures, so that you may live long on earth and have eternal life in heaven. God bless us. Petr Velov